Hello and welcome to my channel, On The Hood Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And today, let's find out what's been on the hook. Well, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. It was a great weekend around here, kind of sad weather, but you know, you make of it whatever it is. So um, I enjoyed staying in my office. I did a lot of work this weekend. And um, first time we've been back to church in eight months uh, because of the COVID crisis. So we were excited to do that. And now it's Monday, so I just want to welcome everyone. If you're a new subscriber, welcome to you. If you're a new viewer, welcome to you as well. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. YouTube must be sending this out to a few people, so I'm really excited about that. Today, I have several things I'd like to discuss, and one is a new pattern, and that'll be coming up here in just a couple of minutes. But right now, I want to talk about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Kimberly Cowl, which I released last year, and I have made this several times, maybe five or six times in different yarns, in different structures, you know, long piece, a cowl. This is crocheted actually in the round. So I uh, enjoyed doing that. That was kind of fun and I, I didn't make this just now. When I first came out with the Kimberly Cowl pattern, I uh, made several of these and this is the first, one of the first ones I made. Actually, I made it from a yarn that I um, bought at a yarn show or a, you know, yarn convention or whatever you call it, Twist Fiber Studio yarn. And this is what the label looks like. Um, I don't even know if they're in business anymore, but they had an Etsy shop, so you might check out there, you might go out to the web and see if you see um, that they have a, a website. But this is the most beautiful yarn. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That is just gorgeous yarn. It's purples and yellows. And I think it was the... Um, I think it was the selected yarn for the particular yarn convention I was at and I did a video about it but it's been a long time ago and I haven't looked back honestly I should have done that before I came on here but I wanted to show you this yarn because it's so beautiful and what I did with the Kimberly cow was that I used this yarn and I combined it holding double with a yellowish yarn and this is also another the same size yarn this is a DK yarn and I held it with the yellow yarn and it was just perfect and I never thought I'd like those two colors together but I do yellow and purple are very beautiful together so I wanted to show this to you because I found it in my um, cowl stash in the bedroom and I thought well I'm gonna go in there and see what I can find to put on today because later on I'm going to be modeling the uh, new vest pattern that I have but I first of all want to show it to you um, on Crystal. She asked me if she could model this for my viewers and subscribers and I said of course you can so I'm going to ask her to come over right now and model the new vest pattern. Well here's Crystal modeling my new vest pattern and this is called Northwest Vest. I'm really excited about this because it's a uh, quite a change from some of the other patterns that I've uh, designed. I like, I'm going to get her up here kind of close and let you see the ribs in this sweater. The ribs in the front, of course, go up and down. And I've talked about this in several videos. Let's see if I can get her back here where you can see her. The ribs go up and down on the front of the vest. And because you make the fronts in kind of big rectangles, the collars fold down so you don't have to create a collar. It just actually happens. And if you sew a large button on the front and make the uh, button loop like I did, it, it sits there very nicely right in the front. The directions to make the button loop are also in the pattern, but um, this is what it looks like when you close it with the button. Now, what it does is creates a little bit of design element here because I made the back in one piece and then I brought it around to the front and the directions again are very simple. This is a beginner's pattern. You can make this if you're a beginner. Just follow the directions in the pattern and you'll be able to make it very easily. And then the bottom edging is very very simple. There's no ribbing on this at all. All the ribs are here, and on the back, the ribs go east and west. 
on the front they go north and south that's why i named it northwest vest i just thought that was kind of cute and what it means is north and west so that's how the ribs are on this particular vest and i like the way it fits and it's also squared off under the arm i thought that was kind of neat i got it to square off right there right there so that um, it gives a little more of an interest around the armhole you only edge one edge of the armhole when you're finished so it's not a huge finishing project uh, once you're finished with it um, actually you just sew the shoulders and uh, you sew one seam here on each side and you're basically done putting it together and then the rest of it is just a little bit of finishing work and you'll have it so i made this from a size four weight yarn and if you've been watching my channel you'll know that that yarn is basic stitch this is by Lion Brand. This is in the colorway Gold Heather. So I used three skeins of basic stitch and a little tiny bit of a fourth skein. So if you're my size, you could probably get away easily with four skeins or if even I'm making them uh, kind of a larger medium or a large, you could get away with maybe four skeins. I would, I always buy, if I'm going to do a sweater quantity of yarn, I try to buy at least one or two skeins more than I need because I don't want to run out. I just, that slows me down and it would slow you down as well. But um, if you, you know, if you have a whole skein or I have a skein and almost three quarters, about three quarters left, um, I could probably make a hat or a cowl or a scarf for someone for Christmas out of this. So the yarn doesn't go to waste. I really like this color. It is what my mom would call a loud color. It's, it's pretty loud but it's very beautiful too so I'm going to let Crystal go back to where she usually hangs out and I'm going to grab this vest and put it on and show you how it looks on me so here I am wearing my new Northwest vest I hope you like it here's the back I don't know if you can see that um, I'm hoping that you can see how it looks on now on this particular vest you can make the fronts a little bit wider and they will come a little bit closer in the front I chose to make them fairly small so, so they would angle out below the button and create a little bit of an opening in the front. But you could certainly make, see you can make the sides a little bit wider and that's an option in the pattern. Of course you take your own measurements so you decide how wide you want the front. The shoulders are fairly narrow and as I was talking about before there is a square under the arm where the ribbing comes around and then the front ribbing takes over and it's north and south. The, the back is east and west. So I'm going to stand up here a little closer so you can see it. I hope you can see that. I really like it. It's warm. So I'm going to wear it for the rest of my video and let's see what else we're going to talk about today. I know the other day I was telling you about a basket that I had made from a pattern in this book and it's called Making with Meaning. I've talked about it several times and I really like it. It's by Jessica Carey and you can get it on Amazon. I don't know where else, but anyway, you can get it on Amazon. And the first thing I wanted to make out of here was the Sensible Storage Basket and that's a picture of hers made with the same yarn I used, only a beautiful yarn. The yarn is called Hudson Bay and I love the colors in this yarn. I'm gonna get this up close. That is a beautiful, beautiful colorway for Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. And I used her book and made the basket. And this is what mine looks like. It's a, you know, it's a very large basket. Look at that, it's huge. It's really large. I like it. And I was going to put some of my grandson's toys in here and I need a storage for my leftover yarn. And this is an example. This is a pretty good sized ball of yarn, but it doesn't have a home. Uh, you know, I, I usually keep my hanks up there on my sideboard where I keep my yarns. So I needed a place to put yarns that, um, you know, I just had leftover little balls of yarn. I have a lot of these. Look at that. I have made a lot of things this year and I have a lot of yarn left over and I wanted a place to put it where it would be pretty and I could look at it and I could go through it if I wanted to find a certain color of yarn. Um, I even have some Rosalinda in here. This is from uh, the first thing I made with Rosalinda. That is 
Malabrigo Rios and I have a sweater in the works that I'm making. I'm excited. I'm almost finished with it. As soon as I finish it, of course, I'll wear it for you and show it to you. But this is the basket where I keep all of my leftover kind of nice yarns. I've got some other yarns. I've got commercial yarns in here. I think I even have this one. This is a mandala. Um, I just I just have lots of different yarns in here and I've enjoyed having this around I set it right over there where I can get to it and it's a beautiful beautiful basket look at that it's absolutely beautiful if you have some lime brand um, woolies thick and quick lying around you can make, make one of these out of maybe I might have used two skeins I'm not sure I think it was two skeins that I used and of course you can quit crocheting whenever you're ready. It, it really makes a pretty good sized basket. I've got the top turned down on this, but this is how big the basket is compared to me. That's big. That's a very large basket, holds a lot of yarn. So when I fill it up after I have the sides turned down, when I fill it up, then I'll have to flip the sides up and, <laughs> and then I'll have a, an even bigger basket. But I just wanted to show you that that is where I found this yarn, which I was looking for this morning to show you the cow, the Kimberly cow that I made um, to start the show. Another little detail about that basket, it fits anywhere you put it. It's flexible, so you don't have to have a certain width to slip that in. So I've got it kind of um, squished into a certain spot there and it fits just fine. It's very flexible. So just wanted to tell you that. As I told you the other day, I am going to try to make my videos a little bit uh, shorter so that I can load them up a little bit easier onto YouTube. So I'm going to try to keep this fairly short, not extremely short. I do like to chit chat and I like to talk about yarn on Mondays because on the weekends I do a lot of uh, crochet work. And I wanted to show you one thing that I am working on right now. This is different from whatever else I've done, I've shown you. But I wanted to show you this because I started it on Saturday morning and I've gotten a long way on it. You can crochet this in your sleep, basically. <laughs> but this is the newest yarn that I received from the Knit Crate subscription box and it's called Audine Wools and it's Twinkle DK. Now, that is not my favorite color. I have found that corals are just not my favorite, but I have it and I thought, well, I'm gonna make it. And this has quite a bit of sparkle in it and I'm gonna hold it up again. You can see that. There's quite a bit of sparkle in here, quite a bit. So it was very easy to crochet with. It's a very beautiful yarn. I found a G-hook. <laughs> I don't usually use a G-hook. This is very small for me. But that's okay. I thought I'm going to use a G-hook on this because I wanted the stitches to be closer together. And I've already used this much from one of the hanks. So I had two hanks and I balled both up. And I'm going to use this hank until I get halfway through this garment. And what it is, it's a scarf. It's very simple. It's not extremely hard to make, but it starts way down here at the end. And it it crochets up to where it's bigger and bigger and your easy increases. And then when I get to a certain point, I'm going to start decreasing. And of course, then the, the scarf will go back down to another point on the other end. So I'll have a long scarf. This is already three feet long. So I'll have probably a six or seven foot scarf when I'm finished. But I wanted to show you how pretty this is made up. This is, this is the Twinkle Old DK. And you can see a little bit of sparkle in there. If you shine a light on it, it's quite beautiful. I uh, was working on it last night. I had the light shining on it. I thought, that is really pretty. It's not the softest yarn I've ever worked with. I love Knit Crate yarns. But this is not uh, soft as I wish it would be. And I think the reason is that there's, uh, there's no nylon in it. Now, there is cashmere in this. It has 80% wool, 10% cashmere, 10% stellina. The stellina is the sparkle. So there's 10% cashmere and 80% wool. So um, the cashmere, there's not enough of it to keep that wool from being a tiny bit rough, but it's not unwearable. I would certainly love to wear this around my neck. It's just not quite as soft as some of the yarns that they've produced with nylon. And I know that um, is mainly sock yarn and I've got plenty of sock yarn over there with nylon in it that I could use for this particular pattern. Now what I'm going to do with this pattern, I'm going to show you how to make the scarf 
And I'm also going to show you how to do some surface crochet. And that is my focus for this pattern. So I'm going to be working with that for the next week or two. And um, I know what design I want to put on here is very simple. There are no stitch counts. I know y'all, some of y'all like it, some of y'all don't. But um, after you, and especially on the scarf, after you start the scarf on one end, you don't have any more stitch counts. You just, you increase where I tell you to increase, but you don't have to have a certain number of stitches. And if you're making this from um, a size four weight, for example, which I plan to do, I have some four weight knit crate yarn that I want to ball up and I'm going to start one in that too as well. And there'll be a border on this and I've decided that the border is going to be, you know, a different color. And I want that color to be this silver. And that will make it happy for me because <laughs> I like silver. I don't especially like coral. But as you crochet through your lifetime, you realize there are some colors you just don't love. I don't think it looks that great on me. I mean, everybody has an opinion. But I think that the silver is going to really make it look good. And I'm going to wear it with a silver-colored turtleneck. Uh, you could also wear this on a black turtleneck. It would be quite beautiful. So I'm going to I'm going to design a pretty border for this. That is, I want this scarf to be easily made. I want it to be easy enough for maybe an adventurous beginner to try. And of course, the design on it with the surface crochet will be totally optional. You don't have to do that. Even the border is totally optional. You can just make the scarf if you want to and just put an edging around it however you want to. So, uh, I, like all my patterns, I like for people to make their own decisions. I like for people to make them the size they want with the weight yarn that they want. Most of my patterns are not made with a specific weight that you can only make it with one weight. Almost all, and I think I'm maybe all, you could make with a size 3DK or a size 4 weight. Some you can make with a bulky. It just depends on how adventurous you are. So be sure that you make um, experiments with different patterns that you have, not just mine, but mine are designed so that you don't have to have a certain type of yarn or a certain hook to make your garment successful. So um, my focus is for you to be experimental in your crochet so that you can design things for yourself, for your children, your grandchildren, for your husband. Uh, it, you don't have to stick to one pattern with certain stitch count and a certain kind of weight and a certain hook. Um, I like for the people who buy my pattern recipes to do all kinds of different designs. I see them on Facebook too, and thank you so much for sending those. I saw a, a brand new uh, Winterscape wrap uh, made by, I think it was Linda. Forgive me if I'm wrong about that name, but... Uh, she had immediately made it out of Colorscape in a different, a different colorway, and she posted it on Facebook. So be sure you go out there and take a look. If you're not a member of the Facebook group, go ahead and apply to be in it. I um, usually am really easy about letting people in, but I've gotten a little more strict. There's no political talk on there. There are no people trolling for uh, dates or <laughs> relationships. I don't want that on my Facebook group. What we're there for is to show each other our crochet and some knit. If you want to throw knit out there, that's fine. But it's mainly a crochet group. And so we're all together there showing things that we've made, either from my patterns or other patterns. I welcome everybody's patterns. Not a problem. So be sure to go out there and take a look at Linda's Winterscape wrap. She did a very beautiful job and fast too. I just released the pattern and bang, she was out there with her beautiful new Winterscape wrap. So thank you, Linda, for, for putting that out there. So anyway, that is what I have going on right now. I am starting this new pattern for my scarf and we're going to learn a new technique. It's new to a lot of people. Um, I think it's good for designing your own scarves and sweaters, things like that. You can use this particular um, surface crochet on and I, I want to show you how to do that with photographs and directions and also specifically for this scarf. So you can immediately apply it to this and you can also apply it to other patterns that you might pick up. So uh, that's what's on the hook right now. I do have some progress on my two sweaters that I'm making. Actually, I'm making 100 sweaters, but <laughs> the two that I talked about last week one is called the Lori Jean Sweater, and I'm really excited to name that. It's named after my sister-in-law, 
and it is the beautiful you two strands together um, sweater that is very very easy to make it's a three-quarter length sleeve um, it, it's going to have a rib at the bottom and I'm going to show you how to do that and uh, I'm really excited about that because it's turning out beautifully one thing about beautiful you it does get a little bit of static in it if you're uh, working in a cool room and it's winter time and the air is a little bit dry the yarn tends to be staticky and so it flies here and there so I had to put that down for a couple of days it was uh, very hard to to keep it controlled because I didn't have any static guard spray I didn't want to spray that on the yarn and so um, I just I put that aside and I'm working on my Rosalinda Malabrigo Rios Archangel sweater well that's a mouthful I'm working on that it is a uh, a new sweater made from my Archangel pattern and I'm going to change the neck a little bit and I've, I'm working on that I have the finished front and the finished back all I need to do now is to sew it together and add the ribbing on and I'll be all finished so I'll hopefully be wearing that someday next week so let's move on and let's talk about some giveaways that I started last Monday and something you can sign up for for next Monday now for the giveaway portion of my show last Monday I talked about some yarn that I'm giving away this week and a couple of crochet surprise boxes as well so let's quickly look at those and then we will find out who the winners are the first winner will receive six balls of Patton Silk Bamboo. This is 70% bamboo and 30% silk. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. I really loved it. I just couldn't find out what I wanted to make from it, so I have the two colors, pink and gray. They're very beautiful. Let's see if I can get that around there. You can see the pink and the gray. I was going to combine those in a sweater with stripes, and I just gave up. I didn't really like the way I was making it, you might like the way you're making it, so I'm going to give all of this away. Each package has 612 yards of that color, so you have um, 1,224 yards to make a sweater. That would make a really nice sweater, maybe in a tunic style or something like that, so you might want to do that. But So that will go to giveaway winner number one. Giveaway winner number two will receive a crochet surprise box. Here it is. It comes in the actual box. A crochet surprise box with the uh, pattern for a ribbon Christmas tree and a tea light holder. Now this looks very interesting. It doesn't look like it would take a long time to make. It's cute for Christmas and so you know what? The tea light you can use anytime. But this was designed for a Christmas um, mail out and because of COVID I think things were very slow down and so they sent it out and it was a little bit late for me so I thought I would um, go ahead and put it in the giveaway I think it's December's crochet surprise but at this point I really don't know because I have another box here that might be January I think it might be so I wanted to show you that this is the pattern folder and it's very nicely done I like the way crochet surprise does this I don't want to compromise the pattern but the pattern is there and then on the back it talks about the tea of the month which is amaretto spice and so i'm sure you'll love to get that but giveaway winner number two will receive this crochet surprise box giveaway winner number three will receive a crochet surprise box i think it's january but this is a cowl pattern it looks very pretty and it's also i'm sure very easy to make the, the instructions are very short they're only 17 rows and each row is a little bit different but you can read the directions this is the very nice folder that they send with each box this crochet surprise the tea of the month is cocoa mint so you'll get a package of this tea in the box just like you do the yarn and the pattern as well for that cowl now let me tell you the name of the cowl i'm sorry the manitow bobble infinity scarf manitow bobble infinity scarf very beautifully done now this is the yarn that comes with it there are four skeins of basic stitch which I dearly love 185 yards on each skein let me turn that so you can see that gorgeous blue let me see they call it steel blue s-t-e-e-l steel blue very very beautiful look at that 
and it's as soft as it can possibly be. I love this yarn. I really do. I've used it for several projects and I have uh, just been so pleased with the way it turns out. So the giveaway winner number three will receive this crochet surprise box. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins these three prizes this week. Here we are with our ca camera pointed to the computer. This is the URL from last Monday. The keyword was silk and I have that typed in right there. So let's find out how many people are actually in the running for this particular giveaway set. There are three different giveaways and 492. My goodness, thank you so much. Y'all, there are more people every week that are signing up for this giveaway. I hope y'all enjoy my giveaways. I try to give away things that I'd like to get, <laughs> which I already have. So anyway, let's go and find out who wins giveaway Gift number one, which is the beautiful bamboo and silk yarn. And that is Crochet Time with Donna Arsenal. Crochet Time with Donna Arsenal. It sounds like she might have her own YouTube channel. Not really sure about that. But anyway, she says, Hello, Jeannie. Love your projects. Congratulations to the winners. I've never worked with silk before. And she goes on. So, so she has the word silk in her comment. So let's move along. That congratulations to Crochet Time with Donna Arsenault. Let's pick another winner right there. And this winner will receive crochet box number one with the Christmas tree. That would be Denise Diotto. Denise Diotto, congratulations. And she has the word silk in her comment as well. So let's move on. Congratulations, Denise. You've won crochet surprise box number one. Let's pick another winner. This person will win the crochet box number two with the cowl pattern and yarn. And her name is Dale Anna Young. Dale Anna Young. Congratulations. A seat. And Silk is in her comment as well. So thank you, Dale. Y'all three are the winners of the giveaway prizes this week. Be sure to email me your mailing address and I will get those right out to you. Congratulations again. Now for next Monday's video. I'm still going through my stash so I've decided to give away some yarn this week and also a finished object. So first of all giveaway winner number one will receive a super simple cowl made by yours truly. Uh, this winter I made this for someone and for Christmas and actually I made one extra I didn't mean to make. So I have an extra one of these. This is in the anemone um, colorway. This is what it looks like up close. This was made by Jeannie of On The Hook Crochet. And I don't need this. I, it will sit around till next year. I already have my own in another colorway and this was not in my colorway but I had plans to give this to someone and I'd already made them one out of the same color. So I have an extra one and it is going in the giveaway next week. So on next Monday I will select a winner of this particular Super Simple Cow. This is the pattern that it was made by Super Simple Cow. The, it's on the Etsy shop. And I made this out of Mandala Fluffy. Now, let me show you the Mandala Fluffy that I made it from. This is the Anemone colorway. Beautiful, beautiful. It's got the pink and green and blue. All the beautiful colors. And there's some yellow in there too, actually. Very pretty. And this is what it looks like. Made up again. This is what it looks like. So, this will go to giveaway winner number one and two balls of the same color will go to giveaway winner number two. Now, each ball, I'll just tell you a little bit about this, each ball has 76 yards of uh, yarn on the ball. It's 100% acrylic, premium acrylic. It's very nice and it's actually very soft. This is a number seven yarn. This is a large yarn, so you'll need a very large hook. And I think I used the PQ hook to make this particular cowl with this particular yarn. So this again is the Mandala Fluffy yarn. It's kind of a new yarn, I think, uh, on their website. I don't know when it was first released, but I discovered it and I really, really like it. I've made 
several cows for girlfriends this year. And again, this one was one extra. So this is going to one of my giveaway winners. Giveaway winner number two, of course, will receive the two balls of yarn, just like this. And giveaway winner number three will receive two balls of Mandela Fluffy in the colorway Fire Gobi. And that's what this color is right here. This is the purple and turquoise, very beautiful. It has a little bit of dark blue in there as well. And it's just gorgeous made up. I made one of these for a girlfriend for Christmas and uh, she was a very big purple lover. She loved purple. So I gave this to her and she was excited about it. So I wanted you to have these two balls, whoever giveaway winner number three might be. And that's what you will receive. Two balls of Mandela Fluffy in that colorway, um, Fire Gobi, G-O-B-Y, Fire Gobi. So be sure to sign up. Now, if you want to sign up for the giveaway and be one of the winners, uh, perhaps, then you can certainly do that. All you do is put a comment down below and write the word fluffy in your comment, F-L-U-F-F-Y, and that will um, enter you in the giveaway for next Monday. So we'll be excited to see who wins one of these. Now, I just want to remind you that um, I have my new vest pattern coming out today. So be sure to go out and take a look at it. Um, it's uh, called the Northwest Vest. Also, those of you in the community, and if you're not in the community, please go down and sign up. It's free. You don't have to buy anything, and you actually get a free pattern when you sign up for the Hug Me Cow. That's what I send out to all my new community members, so be sure to do that if you haven't already. If you're in the community, you will receive an email in your inbox today, and that will have your substantial discount that you can use on this vest pattern or on any pattern in my shop during the, the time frame of the offer code. So be sure to go out soon. If you're gonna buy anything, be sure to do that and use that offer code and get your patterns at a pretty good size discount, what I consider substantial. Um, that is a good discount. So I wanna thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for coming back. If you're a returning person, if you're a subscriber, thank you so much. If you think this video was helpful to you, be sure to like this video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that as well. So I will see you later on in the week and we will have a giveaway winner announcement or actually giveaway winners announcements for the five crochet and cross stitch magazines that um, are in the giveaway for later this week. So be sure to sign up for that. You go to that video and the link should be right up here and uh, you can click that now and go there, watch the video, put the keyword in there and you'll be in the running for the giveaway as well. So I hope you have a great week. I'll see you later on this week and join me then to find out what's on the hook.